Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bonehead Podcast and welcome to the Tree Man unboxing. So we've got our hands on the Tree Man model and obviously Acorn as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the model together, we're going to have a look at the detail, have a look at the size and really give a review of the product. Now I just want to be, uh, say a big shout out and thank you to Entoyment uk who help us get these products early so we can do unboxings so if you're shopping in the uk i recommend entoyment.co.uk help support the show as well anyway onwards to the unboxing okay so let's open them up and have a look at the uh, the product inside let's see if i can do this elegantly and delicately okay cool upside down as the way it should be so we've got a cool gray tray black plastic tray sorry we've got the instructions no base I'm assuming it's in the box as well. So we've got the instructions here. So let's have a quick look. We've got the standard instructions, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, five steps, and you've got the different options at the end there. So six steps, all in all. Doesn't look that complicated. One, two, yeah, it's all right. It doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too bad after opening the uh, the Blood Bowl 2020 set and seeing all of the steps for. <laughs> What, four piece goblin or something this isn't too bad and this is quite cool as well so we've actually got the the rules for the tree man on the back 120k 265 plus 5 plus 11 plus mighty bay plus one stand firm strong arm take root thick skull throw teammate timber yeah actually got them and uh mm, have to check the passing access for here i mean it makes sense that the lauren forest one wouldn't have passing access no other passing access really does anything um, for throw teammate, but still. Okay, so we've got the instructions. We are done with those. Let's have a look at the miniature itself. Oh, it's jammed right in there. Okay, so one bit, two bit, and we get a 40 mil base. So we're not going to need that for a second. All right, so two sprues. Let's have a look at the detail and see if we can get a good, good shot. That's not bad. I'm happy with that. Okay, so we're going to skip... <laughs> the squirrel for now but as we can see classic games workshop you've got plenty of detail the the bark sculpting is really nice on this um you've got all the complicated bits here for the for the lauren forest one um it, it's quite small i was expecting the sprue to be a little bit bigger however i think the the reporting is that the miniature is a little bit smaller than we would normally expect so can you spot acorn the squirrel let's have a look and see if we can get a good shot of acorn there he is the little guy himself <laughs> basically the reason you buy this box is because it comes with acorn the squirrel so you actually get that let's have a go at building the tree man Okay, so we've got him all built now, or him or her. The only thing I've done is I've left the, the mouthpiece off. Um, so it comes with a mouthpiece or a headdress, depending on whether you want to paint it up as a uh, halfling or wood elf tree man. I'm going with the kind of generic tree man. It's got this cool uh, thorn face mask, I guess. It's probably the best way to describe it. That goes on top, but I want to paint it without that because I think dry brushing up the wood is going to be much easier without that little bit on top so let's have a quick look at the finished miniature we'll do some size comparisons in just a moment but look at that the detailing is brilliant the quality is as exactly as what you'd expect from games workshop but the um i think the key for me is that the grain and the kind of sculpting style to represent bark this model is going to paint up insanely easy and um i think for a lot of Blood Bowl people getting into Blood Bowl, um, cause it's, kind of, it's kind of a gateway game. It's halfway between board game and miniature game, which is why we love it so much. The easier the miniature is to make, the easier the miniature is to paint, the kind of the more accessible it is. So we've got the Tree Man here. Let's do a few size comparisons. So first up, because I always have my Dark Elf Blitzer to hand, we can see, size-wise, let's put it down on there. The Tree Man has got some serious heft advantage here. But from a kind of outward point of view or diameter point of view, the outspread arm isn't going to cause too much of a difficulty. You might have to just do some positioning, some clever positioning. But height-wise, uh, it's got <laughs> it's got a fair bit of height on the Dark Elf. Now, let's have a look 
at it compared to an ogre. So this is my slightly converted ogre who's got a knoblar underneath his foot. So he's going to be a bit taller than you would imagine the ogre miniature to be. So if we line these up side by side, you can see that actually they are comparable. But the tree has got more chonk. <laughs> you can see straight through it, but it's got more chonk there. And I think the last model we have to compare it to is um, the Warlord Games tree dude. The Halfling Treeman from Erewhon. Because this is uh, one of my six trees for a tree man team. And really solid tree man miniature. This is Games Workshop's one. So let's have a look. Size wise, I think it's got a little bit shorter than this tree man. Although it's got the branches to give it that extra height. Which I really like as a good detailing point. This is a much more intricate model. This is resin cast. Um, chonk which is definitely a measurable quality, especially when it comes to Blood Bowl. Kind of similar, to be honest with you. Um, this has got the weight, again, because it's resin, but this is a very cool miniature. So size-wise, if we line some big guys up, the Tree Man is shorter, is smaller, got to get the Minotaur in somehow, uh, than the other big guys out there. But it's going to do an absolutely fine job of representing the trees for your Halfling team or your Wood Elf team. Let's chuck Varag in there as well, just to give a bit of a show off how beef Varag is. He's almost the size of a tree man. And lastly, I think, and probably more importantly than anything at all, we've got Acorn the Squirrel. There we go, get some autofocus. This is tiny, so I've just dotted a bit of glue on his base there so I can keep him steady. Because I've also got the Grebo Games one, and I thought it would be cool to compare their size. So Grebo Games is probably twice as tall and twice as massive as Acorn. Makes sense as Acorn's supposed to go on the tree, um, but still, you've got two great options here for your top tier Squirrel Star player. Just on building the tree, it really wasn't that difficult. You guys would have seen from the very quick time lapse that it wasn't that tricky at all. The pieces cut up nicely, they fit together mostly. <laughs> Fitting a couple of them, you kind of got to figure out how it goes first, so always dry fit. Now, I use super glue because I don't trust myself, and it's easier to crack apart super glue, file it down, and re glue it. Um, plastic glue will keep your model way, way safer, and uh, I just dab glued him on there because getting basing material underneath here is going to be a bit tricky, but because the contact points to the base are so slim, I think I'm just going to base, then put the model on top. So, Bit of a modelling project, but honestly, brown spray, dry brush, Agrax for the win. And this model's going to paint up in no time at all. So ultimately, I'm a big fan. I'm a very big fan of this model. Anyway, that's going to wrap up the unboxing for the Tree Man for Blood Bowl. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back again soon with more Blood Bowl content. See you later.